Hey guys, Steve here, aka your nerd tech. Now, do you have old external hard drives laying around the house that just doesn't connect anymore? And also have a laptop that needs a bigger drive installed into it, but you really don't want to have to spend the money for another hard drive? Well, then stick around because I'll show you how you can put this into this. Alright, so the tools you're going to need for this operation, you're going to need a screwdriver. I have my 54-bit set from iFixit. It came in my Pro Tool Set. And a metal spudger that also came in the Pro Tool Set. If you actually want to pick up one of these guys, I'll put a link down in the description below where you can purchase this set. Alright, for the first part of this operation, we're going to go ahead and pull the drive that's in this external. Unfortunately, the controller board is bad in this drive, but the hard drive is still good in it, and it's a one terabyte hard drive. I just don't want to throw this away in the trash. That hard drive is still useful to me, so I want that out of there. Alright, to go ahead and get that drive out of here, we're going to need a Phillips screwdriver and a metal spudger. Okay, so we'll go ahead and we're going to take this top cover off of this enclosure. Now, as you can see, you probably wonder, oh, you know, typically the screws in the corners unscrew and it pops off. Uh, other externals, the top piece just slides up and then comes off. But on this one, unfortunately, there's no screws and it doesn't slide open. So for this one, we're going to go ahead and take our metal spudger here. Spudger. And we're going to go along the sides. We're going to go along the sides and then slightly pry up on this lid. Typical external hard drives normally have two clips on each end and then three going down the side on each side. So kind of just roughly map out where they are. And then just pry up. Now depending on if you want to reuse this enclosure on how careful you want to be with it. Considering that really this enclosure is garbage to me, I just want the drive. I'm not too concerned about damaging the outside of this casing, but you do want to be careful because you don't want to damage the hard drive that's in it. So we'll go along. That's probably roughly where another one is. Pry up. Work away to the front here. Just pry up. Alright, now that's all clear. Now she just slips up. And there's that one terabyte hard drive that I'm after. Alright, so now that we have the cover off of it, this should just come right off. So from the back here, pry up here, and then pull out. And then this is the controller board right here that's bad on this thing and honestly all these do they just unplug and there it is go ahead and peel this plastic off and there's screws on each end that's seated into these grooves and you can see one of the rubber pieces fell off and then now you take these rubber boots off and it reveals a Phillips screw so we'll go ahead, take our iFixit screwdriver, or any screwdriver you have at home, and remove these screws. Now the screws are removed. So now let's now take this bad boy and let's put it on a laptop. Actually, now that I got this enclosure here, I really don't want to actually throw this enclosure away. It's actually pretty nice. It's a uh, pretty durable. It's a uh, light metal. So I came up with an idea. And the idea involves this enclosure and a bunch of leftover hard drive magnets. If you want to see what I have in mind for this, just let me know down in the comments below. 
All right, so now I have my HP Mini 110 laptop here. Uh, my dad actually gave this laptop to me. Uh, he got it for free from a store when he purchased a different desktop computer. I don't quite remember the, the name of the store, but since they're giving away for free, they didn't deck these out very well. It only comes, I think, with a 250 gig hard drive, maybe even smaller. And for me, that's just not quite enough. Uh, if I take this on the road and I record videos, I need more room to store these videos on. So now that I pulled out that one terabyte hard drive, we're going to go ahead and put this in here. Let me show you how to do that. All right, so just like in the previous video, like I said before, you always want to remove the power source first. You don't remove the power, you're taking the risk of blowing something. So let's go ahead. On this computer, there's two tabs. And we push the battery out. All right, to get to the hard drive on this particular model, depends on the computer. A lot of times there's slots on the side here, and you just remove a couple screws and the hard drive slides out. Or on the bottom, you can see a panel here for the RAM. They'll have the same exact panel, but for the hard drive. Unfortunately, on this particular model, we're going to have to take the keyboard out to get to the hard drive. So to do that, where the battery slot is, when we took the battery out, it exposed, it exposed three screws. One deep down in the bottom here, and then two in the center. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to move those three Phillips screws, and then we'll remove the keyboard. All right, and to remove these screws, they are particularly small. I'm using a PH00 Phillips screwdriver. They are pretty small. And this is where the magnetized screwdrivers come in handy because I can't get my finger on it like I did these other ones. But with the magnetized screwdriver, they just stick to it. All right, so now with the three screws removed, we can go ahead and pull up on the keyboard. To remove it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift the lid and this metal tab here, I'm just going to push up on the tab and it's going to push the keyboard up. All right, so as you see, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to push on the metal tab. And you'll see the keyboard lifts. Just grab it with the other hand and pull up on it. Now, you don't want to just pull up the keyboard just right away and start throwing it to the side because there is a connector for this, and it's connected to those zip connectors like I told you before. We'll go ahead and we'll be careful. And as you see here, you see the zip connector down here. All right, and as you see here, you see the zip connector. On this particular one, it just has a black tab here, and we lift up on it, and the connector comes out. All right, All right so now that we have the keyboard removed, you can see the hard drive here. To get this hard drive out, there's only three screws. One right here. Which this one doesn't come out. It's connected with a spring. It's just to hold the hard drive down. And we got two in the front here. Move that one. And we'll go ahead and move that one. Alright, and to remove this hard drive, there's a black tab here. Pull back and then up. And now the hard drive's out. Alright, before we can just go ahead and throw this hard drive in, there's a little bit of preparation we gotta do. The first thing we gotta do is we gotta remove this hard drive caddy from the old hard drive and put it on the new one. So for that, there's only three screws on the side here. Move that one. And there's two on this side. So now the old hard drive's out. Now we'll put the new hard drive in the caddy. Definitely want to make sure you have the screws lined up perfectly with the hole because you don't want to strip, uh, strip them.
And now the preparation work is complete. We can put the hard drive in the computer. All right, so to put the hard drive in the computer, this is exactly vice versa when we pulled it out. So we'll go ahead and we'll drop it in the slot first. And all we do is just pull that in. And now she's plugged in. Go ahead and put the two screws that were up here back in. And tighten this one down. And now she's back in. Alright, so now we're going to put the keyboard back in. You can see here the zip connector that held the cable in place. Go ahead and take that cable. We're just going to guide it into the slot there. And then all you do is just push the tab down. And that locks her in place. Alright, so to put the keyboard back in, there's four extension tabs on the bottom of this keyboard. So that means we need to put the bottom in first. There's little lining holes that go with it. So you slide that in and then drop her in place. And now we can put those three screws that's behind the battery back in. And she's ready to roll. All right, so now I'm ready to put the screws back in. Let's see if we can get a little better view for you. And again, I cannot stress enough, magnetic tip screwdrivers come extremely in handy. Alright, so now we can take the battery and slide her back in. Alright, so now that I have the hard drive swapped in the computer, I can go ahead and reload the operating system. Unfortunately, you are going to have to do that, but most computers do come with CDs that you can reload the computer with. Uh, they only work for the particular model that it comes with. Or you can get uh, a new operating CD from online. Uh, they do go for relatively cheap, depends on which version you buy. But for now, that shows you how you can take a junked up external that has a bad hard drive controller, but the hard drive is still good in it, and put it to good use and not waste it and throw it away. I really hope you enjoyed the video, and if you haven't already, please just take a second and subscribe to my channel. It really does help. Also, you can find me at Facebook and Instagram. I'll have links down in the description below. I love chatting with you guys. And if you missed last week's video, you can check it out right here. Alright guys, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. And don't forget to get nerdy.